Yo, what's up, everybody? It's International Master Daniel Wrench. We're back on the Chess.com YouTube channel here for another live sessions today. Live chess games, live chess sessions, something we I like to do on the uh, main main site, on our Chess.com site, and something I thought might be fun for our YouTube crowd. Here we have a Mises Scotch. I'm going to play Bishop D3 here. I'm playing somebody who's <clears throat> pretty good here, higher rated than me on this this chess server. Uh, and uh, we should have an interesting game. Okay, so right now I have a four on three majority on the king side over here, which is going to give me an, a, a potential attacking uh, game over on that side of the board. So I'm going to continue to try to pry and perhaps induce some weaknesses and um, get 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 some attacking chances going with my pawns. My opponent uh, moving extremely quickly here uh, seems to have no fear over what's coming and. Uh, has allowed this pawn structure to get going, and so we're going to see if we can perhaps make him regret that decision, not to uh, not to fear our plan. Um, though to his credit, it looks like he's he's managed to defend the uh, the mating the mating attack to this point. Um, right now, I'd I'd really like to find a way to make some sort of sacrifice magic happen here on g6, but I can't really seem to do that. If queen takes g6, f takes g6, f7 is mate. Um, but if queen takes g6, he can take with the h pawn, and I don't see that he has to do anything forcing after that. So I'm going to keep the pieces on the king side and hope that I can continue to generate enough counterplay against his uh, weakened king side to justify my pawn sacrifice. Um, I think I should be able to do that, but uh, you never know. Uh, that's why they call them live chess sessions, because they're exciting and they're fun, and, and you never know what's going to happen. The... Uh, the most amazing show on the internet, as I like to call them. Not really, but uh, there's plenty of other more entertaining things you can find on YouTube if that's what you're into, right? But uh, if you're into chess, then uh, this is some pretty cool stuff. Um, okay, well, I need to bring more pieces to the king side. And maybe I should have played rook takes f5 last move and further blown open his king side. But if that was the case, then I missed that opportunity. Um, right now, I'm going to continue to... Uh, Perhaps prepare a rook lift, which was one of my one of my ways to increase the attack that I wasn't able to do as long as his bishop was still on the right diagonal. Uh, but I might be able to do it now, given the way the game has gone. I've been managed to actually eliminate that bishop, and uh, now we're in a position where the attack does seem to be getting a little bit closer to success, but uh, still unclear exactly how I'm going to break through right now. By the way, this is a three-minute game with both of us. Um, playing with three minutes on our clock total to start the to start the battle, um, and so right now I have a minute and twenty seconds, and my opponent has a minute and forty five. Uh, obviously, as we said at the beginning of the game, he was moving rather quickly, um, even for a live three minute game like this. Was certainly using no time to think about his opening. Uh, I didn't really like his opening moves. We're going to back into this thing up and review it as we always do to to turn this entertainment into instant education as everybody loves about these live sessions. So we're going to back it up and try to learn what we can about what happened. But right now, we're sitting on pins and needles. I have a minute and 20. He has a minute and 20. So Queen of Five was obviously a mistake because I was able to just pretty much kick his rear end back home. And now he's uh, in a position where... Um, I managed to win that pawn on h5 due to the fact that this g6 pawn is pinned to his king. And I think I, I'm going to continue to increase uh, upon my attack. Can I sacrifice and do it that way? If rook takes, pawn takes, queen takes, king h8, we have f7 threatening queen g8 mate. Only way to stop it is bishop g7 and then queen h5 is a mating net. So rook takes g6, f takes g6, queen takes g6, king h8, f7, bishop g7, queen h5, check, bishop h6, queen takes h6 mate. I like it. The only other option he would have is to block on g7 with his uh, bishop after queen takes g6. But if he does so, I have two moves. One of them, I can just take the bishop um, and, and equalize the material out again. Or I can play the move e6 and try to dislodge his queen from the seventh rank so that I might play queen takes g7 and, and checkmate, checkmate this guy right where he stands. Um, let's hope that that works. It looks like if bishop g7, e6, if he plays the move rook to e2, trying to get me to capture the rook and leave my back rank undefended for checkmate. I'm just going to move my rook to a safe square. See, I anticipated that. And uh, his last try, like a last cheapo. And now, um, if he moves the queen, I'm going to take on g7 checkmate anywhere off the 7th rank. If he doesn't, then I'm going to uh, win the queen. Oh, okay, he resigns. Well, let's back up and take a look. We had a scotch game, which is one of my favorite openings. My opening of choice is white. 
he played the Mises, but generally after knight takes c6, b takes c6, the main line is to move e5, attacking the knight on f6, and the theory would, would continue something like this, where white has a better pawn structure due to black's weaknesses here, but, but black has pressure against the e5 pawn and a small lead in development. Uh, without going too much into the theory, that's what happens. Bishop b3 is not the most common approach, and it's designed to to try to use my four-on-three pawn structure advantage, as we alluded to, as a majority to eventually try to attack on the king side. And my opponent didn't seem to have any fear of that idea coming, walked right into it, allowing me to extend this e5 pawn with the early d5, which I believe is a mistake. And as the game developed, I was happy to see my pawns get rolling. Um, not sure if I misplayed this position slightly here. In any case, uh, eventually, I did manage to create some real pressure. Despite the fact that I lost the e5 pawn, his structure leaves something to be desired. So the, the loss of the pawn is hardly being felt right now for white. I still have three versus three. And though he's up a pawn, as we said, his structure is not that good. So I'm able to continue to attack on basically equal terms in terms of the pawn structure. And eventually, um, you see, I had all kinds of threats here. I wanted to do things like bishop takes, and if he takes, I can, I can perhaps get some sort of discoveries, but none of this seems to amount to much, not to mention that after bishop takes, he can also take my queen right away. So I was looking for something brilliant to show you guys, but I'm not sure my play was anything, anything close to brilliant. In any case, I managed to just basically play, uh, improve my attack the solid way, just bringing pieces toward the king side. I thought about sacrificing the exchange here, but... Do I have any real clear follow-up? I don't know. Maybe this rook lift does something. Maybe I, I, I strengthen the bishop first and then try to attack. But in any case, I, I think that what I did, solidifying my, my position before looking to sacrifice anything more, was also good. And uh, as I brought more pieces to the king side, eventually my opponent was in, in, in quite a bind because he doesn't want to remove the bishop due to obvious tactics if I get my pieces going against his king. Um, but in trading it, he didn't help himself at all. At this point, the position may already be lost for my opponent with, with threats of queen takes h5, and certainly queen f5 didn't help. So the attack got going, and the rest was history. I was proud of myself for seeing this counter shot rookie 2 in advance, where he tries to get me to capture it so that he can deliver a back rank mate, but I was already aware that a simple move like rook g1 leaves this position with something to be desired, in, in uh, saying the least. So, all right, well, this was another live chess game, another sweet chess game here in our Sweet Chess Games Play This, and another live chess sessions, and uh, that was fun. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you around on chess.com.